this is how once a certain monk went to the buddha and asked about right understanding then the buddha said it is the knowledge of suffering or unsatisfactoriness knowledge of the cause of unsatisfactoriness the knowledge of the cessation of unsatisfactoriness and the knowledge of the path lead into the cessation of unsatisfactoriness friends i am so glad to be here with you this year to to share the dhamma with you and to practice the dhamma practice with you as <clears throat> we met last year we learned the dhamma and practiced the dhamma from today i will be with you until the 11th so we can meet from time to time we can learn the dhamma and practice the dhamma today is the sunday service now it is the time for all of uh, us to understand the dhamma you all are ready to listen to a dhamma talk for this dhamma talk our topic is right view or right understanding and how it is to be developed what is right view or right understanding the pali term for this is samma ditti ditti literally means uh view though the teaching of the buddha is going beyond it beyond this simply the view you know there are two translations view and understanding for the term pali term samadhi view is uh we all have our own views view is quite i see as i see it is quite narrow you in the time of the buddha there were 62 views ditti or isams buddha understood that all those were sort of confined those were confined to a certain limitation the buddha wanted to see beyond these views therefore buddha found a way to understand reality as it is reality cannot be reached through views but through understanding realization reality reality is to be realized by the wise that is how the buddha saw this in order to understand this when we think of right understanding now from this time i would like to use the term right understanding because i prefer to use that term rather right view this is right understanding in order to understand right view or right understanding there are i as i see there are three levels of understanding right understanding i put this as three e's three e's e starting e the three terms ethical level enlarged level and enlightened level three is ethical level of understanding that is simply to understand ethics in every religion in every society we should know what is good and bad what is right and wrong what is wholesome and unwholesome that is simple if we are right thinking people we can understand what is right what is right is again depend on different situations so however 
we can simply understand right and wrong good and bad wholesome and unwholesome that is what is called ethical level the second level is bit enlarge we buddhist want to enlarge our knowledge we want to see uh, we, if we use the word uh, view it is a panoramic view we want to enlarge our view enlarge the uh, and see it deeper we want to go deeper level that is true uh, ten there are ten wrong views buddha has pointed out ten views which are wrong therefore they are called miccha ditti against it is the the direct opposite of samma ditti miccha ditti this we should go beyond this ditti these ten views for this the buddha said ten views there are people as the buddha said there are people who do not take do not see the importance of offering giving sharing with others they always neglect it and say that nothing given no point given why should you give others and there are people who do not like do not see the importance of offering something when you offer something to a religious person to a spiritual person there are results but there are people in society they do not see this uh, results this, this importance of giving offering and also there are people who do not see the importance of sacrifice if you do such things there are results we have to see this we have to understand this not simply having a view but we should understand this there are people who do not see uh, this world for those who were in the past in the other world they do not see this world they see only one world there are different worlds different realms as you all know there are 31 different realms so we have to see these things and for those who are here living here they do not see the next world they simply think that once we die everything finished everything is over that is a sort of nihilistic view so such people think that there is no point support in parents support in mother support in father father no results they don't see whether it's good so such people think uh, that there are no spontaneous beings you know beings are born spontaneously as well spontaneously means without the unification of parents parents union without parents union beings are born in the world such as deities hungry ghost preta yakha different beings they have no parents but they simply manifest because of their karma in such a case people don't believe this there are people they they don't believe this spirits they are called spontaneous being and they do not believe they do not accept that there are some people who have developed their mind and uh, reached some different stages such as stream entry one written and non written this type of things they don't believe these things so those all those are called wrong view but they kept them all away because they were wrong view but the pointed out the importance of seeing things as they are that is why how that is how we enlarge our knowledge enlarge our view so that it become 
a enlarged view the buddha say buddha taught us there are results of giving if you give others if you share with others if you practice dana you can gain results you can be happy that is what is called punya or merit if you offer something to a virtuous person you can be more happy if you do a sort of sacrifice you can you can be more and more happy believe or not there are there will be there are other other planets other realms in the world you have to accept these things and if you support your mom if you support your dad there are results these are good things that is how you see the right understanding that is how you understand rightly correctly properly then the buddha said there are beings born spontaneously there are people there are uh, persons who have developed their mind and who have come to understand reality things as they are so these are called right view how about right understanding and when we come to uh, the third level that is called enlightened level when you come to enlightened level as the buddha said what is right understanding is understanding is the knowledge of unsatisfactoriness the knowledge of the cause of unsatisfactoriness the knowledge of the cessation of unsatisfactoriness and the knowledge of the path leading to the cessation of unsatisfactoriness this lead us for the realization of this four noble truth not mere not mere understanding level but eventually the realization level of the four noble truths so the buddha's instruction here is to go deeper and deeper simply understanding these 10 things as wholesome is not enough as merit is not enough therefore buddha said go beyond merit even you one day you will have to uh, you to shun both merit and demerit and go beyond for that the buddha taught the way right understanding buddha said it is the harbinger it is the forerunner forerunner the harbinger is the uh, is for the truth dhamma and the nibbana just like the dawn is the harbinger of sun right understanding is the harbinger of truth the four noble truth for this purpose buddha delivered a special discourse named maha chattari saka sutta maha chattari saka means great 40 great 40 where the buddha pointed out two types of right understanding we can simply understand things when we come to understand we first we have to come from wrong understanding to right understanding right understanding with that right understanding we are doing something good though we are doing something good it does not lead to the cessation of dukkha for which the, we have to uh, then abandon that sort of right thing what you call good that right things we do right things good things as meritorious deeds such as offering dana doing many different good deeds 
but all this are blended with uh, taints therefore buddha said sasava with sasava with taints with defilements there are defilements there are greed hatred and delusion we organize a big ceremony which is which is good it is a religious ceremony which is good but when you do this type of thing there is hate there is greed there is something expecting something such as gain maybe gain and fame such things though it is good it is not kusala it is not not leading to kusala therefore the buddha said this all these are called sasava with taints punya bhagya heading to punya heading to right heading to merit is a good thing though there are taints punya bhagya upadi vepakka which gives results in future therefore that is good that is right understanding that's one way to see and the buddha's teaching real teaching is going even beyond that what you call right understanding that level is called anasava no taints anasava lokuttara going beyond the world loka uttara loka is the world go beyond the world go lokuttara magganga it is the factor of the path which leads to the path to the cessation to the deliverance nibbana so this is how the buddha taught us what right understanding is our right understanding should lead to right intention right intention right intention is very much important in the teaching of the buddha people do many things thinking that it is right that it is with right understanding they do many things but not with clear intention clear understanding of what is intention intention simply they think that if whatever you are doing if you have a particular intention to do something good that is what is intention for them intention is not in future all the time we have to understand intention means now whether your intention is good now at this moment for instance you can you can uh, think to build a religious place where the the land in the land there are there is a big tree you simply cut this down and make the place build a house there for a religious purpose where there are uh, your intention is good because you want to make you want to build a religious place but you have break some precepts some uh, sort of regulations some rules if the property is not belongs to you what happens it belongs to the government or it belongs to somebody else then you have done something wrong though you have right intention you have done something wrong you have uh, you have broken some uh, precepts or like stealing hmm? or maybe you have uh, killed some um animals there all those are to be understood when you do something now whether my intention is right now is a good intention now this for this section for this section like that like that when you do good deeds you to understand whether the intention is clear intention is good at this moment 
right intention means not to hold things not to not to attach to things there are people they do good deeds for instance they donate money for some reason for a cause good cause and then they want to say this this is what i did this is what i did i gave this much money for that purpose and then they grasp it they think that once you once you gave you know right intention the first thing is nekkam sankap we have to have a good intention to let things go once you do something let it go we don't want to grasp it if you simply uh, think of it and talk too much about what you what you donated or what you did that is in your mind as a as a rudiment as something a uh, hindrance you always think of that and you are sometimes talking too much of it because of your attachment to that though you materially gave it not mentally you have not abandoned such things right intention then right uh, livelihood uh, right right intention one thing is abandoning let things go that is called uh, nekkam sankap then the second one is avyapad sankap avyapad avyapad means non ill will this has to be practiced when we have right intention non ill will we have no ill will towards anybody anyone any being then non cruelty is to be practiced you know, when we practice in such a way it is because of our right understanding it is because of our right understanding that we come to right intention our if our intention our thoughts our concepts are clear good concept good intention we talk about something good that is right speech right speech right speech is very much significant to be practiced as a congregation as a group as a buddhist group especially when we get together even here or wherever we have to be very careful of what we are talking if we simply get together and just talk too much things gossip false speech uh malicious talk has speech frivolous talk you know the buddha gave four four different precepts to curb this tongue mm-hmm. for all other things only one precept refrain from killing is done finish only one huh refrain from stealing repent simply repent it done repent from sexual misconduct only one precept but to repent from false uh, repent from this mouth tongue false speech malicious speech harsh speech uh, frivolous talk for the parent hmm? musawada pissuna vacha parusa vacha sampa phala four different things therefore we have to be very careful when we talk that is how we practice that is how we become good buddhist not the label buddhist good buddhist should be mindful mindful of what we are talking so our if we have right speech which leads to right action right livelihood right effort right mindfulness right concentration when we have right concentration it is called right concentration why it is with the support of first seven factors of the path 
right concentration can be gained only with the support of the first seven factors of the path without which that concentration that you gain is not the right concentration the buddha said it is to this this concentration right concentration that one can come to right understanding right realization that is where right understanding helps us to understand clearly realize the reality the four noble truth that is the knowledge of un, uh, unsatisfactoriness the knowledge of the cause of unsatisfactoriness the knowledge of uh, the cessation and the path leading to the cessation that is the reality that is how one realize real nature of the world that factor is called right knowledge samma jnana which leads to the right liberation so this is why friends we have to understand right understanding if we have right understanding the buddha said it is the forerunner as the forerunner it helps us to understand all this process the whole teaching now let's understand how to develop this right understanding right understanding is to be developed in our daily life it is to be developed by uh, two things by practicing and studying study and practice practice and study these two should go together hand in hand or in like like what you call it yin and jing huh? yang just like that jing yang yang this should be practiced together when you practice in daily life husband and wife should practice this husband and wife should practice understand properly understand why they met why they are under the same roof for this they should practice two things love and respect love and respect simply having love is not enough love should go beyond carnal love beyond sexual love the husband and wife should be real kalyana mitta to each other kalyana it is the kalyana mitta who uh, helps us to understand the nature of this world and to realize dhamm so the husband and wife should be kalyana mitta real kalyana mitta and they should respect each other that is one thing secondly they should lead a contented life contentment is the greatest wealth the buddha said santutti paramam dana contentment is santutti santutti paramam dhana in referring to dhana the wealth people today the people are all the time engaged in earning it is true you have to earn you have to earn the buddha said earn things righteously earn things righteously again the buddha said earn when you are young the wealth is to be gained when you are young that is not only money gold silver not only these things these are important for life to live you have to keep it in our mind that we earn this to live not to hoard these things 
not to cling to these things. In our daily life, we have to understand we have something more to see, more to gain, not only money, not only other sort of material things. The Buddha pointed out seven, seven types of wealth. What are the seven? Buddha said, Saddha dhanam. Saddha is the uh, wealth. Saddha means confidence. Confidence. If you have confidence in the Buddha, Dhamma and the Sangha, it is a great wealth, which is the indispensable factor for our practice. Saddha dhanam. Secondly, Sila dhanam. Sila is morality. Morality, precepts, our discipline is a wealth. Saddha dhanam, Sila dhanam. Then Hiri, Hiri is moral shame. If we have no moral shame, we do anything, anything wrong. Shamelessly. Hiri dana. Shame, moral shame is to be main, maintained. Then Ottappa. Ottappa is moral dread, moral fear. That is to, uh, that is, you have fear of doing unwholesome deeds. It is also to be maintained. Then sutta dana, sutta, sutta means listening, listening to the good uh, thoughts, like listening to dhamma, you to learn, learn good things. That is also a wealth. Then practice generosity, chaga, generosity, the last Panya, wisdom, to be developed. Those seven factors, seven types of wealth are to be gained by all of us. As husband and wife, again, should not be burdened, should not be burdened to each other. Husband should not be a burden to wife. Wife should not be a burden to husband. We should not be burdened to society, to our children, to the country, to the whole world. For that we should understand Dhamma. That is what is called understanding, right understanding. We have to think that I should not be a burden to these people. Monks should not be burdened to lay persons. Lay persons should not be burdened to monks, to monastics, like that. In every society, every uh, situation, we have to understand that we should be easily supportable. Should be easily supportable. Then we have to study. We have to study. Study and practice to which we can gain right understanding. What should be uh, studied? What should we study? We have to practice. We have to practice mindfulness, clear comprehension. Then we can understand clearly that things are changing. It is because of our right understanding we see things are changing. If you see things are changing, you can see, you can understand whatever we grasp are quite unsatisfactory because things are changing. If you see this change in nature, you can see there is nothing unchanging. <coughs> And again, as parents, we have to 
you to take care of our children we have to take the responsibility of our house and children as parents that cannot be neglected that cannot be forgotten every person every parent should take that responsibility to take care of their children and to take care of the house and children we as parents should teach them guide them to do what is good and to avoid what is bad that is how we teach them ethics you have to teach them they are innocent if we simply neglect this where should they turn to no place therefore it is the responsibility of parents to teach them ethics to teach them how to deal with people that is very important we have to teach them what is called spirituality and we have to teach them how to develop how to practice dhamma how to practice mindfulness how to practice observe how to practice to observe things objectively properly see things properly we have to teach them how to practice generosity rather be stingy people become stingy when they do not give so then we have to teach them how to practice meditation samadhi sila samadhi panya that is the path that is how we teach our children we pass this dhamma from generation to generation how to keep the right understand it is because of our right understanding we pass the same message to our next generation friends that is how we have to practice so to understand right understanding we have to study this dhamma the buddha has taught us a wonderful dhamma which is which is uh, everlasting and cannot be found from anywhere else this dhamma is to be practiced we were born as buddhist whether you were born or not as buddhist now you are a buddhist think that it is not spontaneously but with cause and effect you came to this situation now you know better therefore better you understand the dhamma as well in order to understand the real dhamma real dhamma of the buddha please read the discourses for instance buddha once gave a special discourse named mahatithayatana sutta the great discourse of ten tenet uh, sectarian tenets sectarian views there were many different views in the time of the buddha there were there was a group they thought that everything happened because of creator creator created of all of us it's a view buddhism going beyond that it's understanding we go beyond that to understand not simply having a view we we broaden our view we enlarge our view and go beyond that is right to understand it another group they said everything happens because of past karma to put them all put all things into your karma past karma the buddha said no such things things happen not because simply because of past karma and another group they said things happen because of uh, they all come naturally uh, spontaneously involuntarily but they said no there are cause cause and effect paticca samuppada like that but they gave that special discourse to for all of us to understand 
the nature Buddha pointed out things happen because of cause and effect things happen because of six elements there are six elements earth water fire air space and consciousness all things in the world all things are composed with these things no nothing else nobody can uh repute this tarnish this teaching that is how we buddhist see reality with right understanding for that purpose we have to study these discourses please study the discourses like mahatittayatana sutta dhatu vibhanga sutta the analysis of elements samadhi samma samadhi samma ditti sutta samma ditti sutta the right understanding the discourse on right understanding delivered by venerable sariputta and Ch- chakka sutta the six sets of six then we can understand what is reality that is our right understanding if we can understand that things are changing which is called anicca dukkha and satisfactory and anatta soulless nature then we do not grasp things as mine me or myself this is reality this is how we understand right with right understand and un, uh, right understanding we come to realize realize things that is called right liberation right deliverance this is the purpose of teaching right understanding so friends let's understand this wonderful teaching and practice in our daily life what what is called right understanding with that one day this same right understanding will lead us for the right liberation may we all see things as they are may we all realize real peace real happiness of nibbana sadhu 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 thank you bante for the very good talk here that tells us the difference between right view and understanding to start off with now we have about 5 minutes for q and a session before bante needs to go off for the lunch so any questions from anyone on the floor thank you bante for the good dharma talk bante i'd like to clarify earlier on you were saying uh, understanding that don't be a burden and uh that could you maybe explain that a bit because i think a lot of times you do not want to be a burden but you become a burden you're saying husband burden to wife or children burden to parents some children are born handicapped yeah, and then they are burden or some people are like you know they live very long and then they are burden so there's a lot of <laughs> yeah, a lot of burdens around how do you understand and, and please uh, uh explain the understanding of burden burden means uh, like for instance the handicapped people handicapped uh, children sometimes the people might see that they are they, they are burdens burden to the parents burden to society but that is not their own intentional actions they were born according to their karma now they are here though they are uh, here Uh, can, they cannot do anything properly it we should not take them take it as a burden because it is not their intentional action they did not want to be born intentionally they did not want to be, be born here as a handicapped person but as parents we have to take them and uh, take the opportunity that it is a wonderful opportunity for me to practice develop my metta my karuna my upekha 
మై ముద్దిత ఫోర్ దిస్ ఫోర్ ఫోర్ ఫ్యాక్టర్స్ ఫోర్ సబ్లైమ్ ఎఫర్ట్స్ సబ్లైమ్ అబర్ట్స్ దిస్ ఫోర్ బ్రహ్మ విహార క్యాన్ బీ డెవలప్ బై సచ్ సచ్ పేరెంట్స్ సో ఇట్ ఈస్ అ బ్లెస్సింగ్ పేరెంట్స్ షుడ్ గెట్ దట్ ఆపర్చునిటీ నాట్ యాజ్ అ బర్డన్ బట్ యాజ్ అ బ్లెస్సింగ్ they don't want to go to temples they don't want to go to the the go into front of the buddha always to say something or do this different rituals or anything but they can be more mindful and they can practice more and more this four uh, brahma vihara if they practice this four they can attain enlightenment even in this very world by practicing simply practicing for brahma vihara so you can be sadhu. more mindful even one more question refer to the right understanding speech and action i feel that in the modern living or maybe living in the in the city city life for example like singapore uh, people more practice in the quick we call it quick uh, answer quick speech and quick action and quite often quick understanding i think so how to cultivate in this living society with the right understanding right speech and right action right understanding right what are the three things when we live in a small town people don't responding so fast but in the modern living or maybe in the in this uh, young society maybe people respond rather fast or maybe quick and <coughs> in the reality when we are quick we we used to say something maybe not so right because not able to get to the to the deep or understanding but now we cannot change the society people living now with the with the modern equipment but our understanding our speech and our action is something need more time mm. how to cultivate this okay so it's a good question if you become quick what happens to realize real peace you will quick for that also hmm? quickly if you can understand quickly practice mindfulness also practice uh, develop your mindfulness as well quickly quickly we do things but we have to be mindful whether our action is good or bad whether it is right or wrong however much you ah uh, you are hasty in haste waste hmm? when you haste you send up with waste so people are in society the people are uh, very busy this is not only this country where i live is i think in comparison to here it is uh worse people are uh, people have to work hard they have to do many different things within couple minutes that is why everybody is prepared to say busy 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 what is the end i was living four years in new york the one of the busiest if not the busiest in the world busiest city 
cities in the country, in the world. So I understood that it's, it is very busy. Even I was busy by that time. <laughs> you know, while I was there, I see the people are very busy. They have no time to understand Dhamma. Just going over the head. Not through the ears, but over the head. <laughs> people. Then, I, while I was there, I did the same thing. Like teacher, like Buddhist, uh, I was the teacher for meditation and the Dhamma. I also had to go to different cities to teach the Dhamma. And eventually I thought that people are in a particular circle to earn, to gain money, to earn money. I was in a circle to teach them Dhamma. So I wanted to break this circle. Therefore I decided it is not the way that I don't want to become a, a sort of busiest monk. <laughs> Some people used to say that uh, I was the speedy monk. So however, then I thought that it's better become more calm, quiet. Therefore I found another place to stay uh, with more uh, secluded to lead a secluded life but I did not give up my service so that is how we have to understand society means who society means you you are the society if you become little calm calmer calm down yourself then you can understand better we have to we have to mold ourselves first if we mold ourselves, we become, we mold the society. That is the way. So though we, uh, we are busy, we have to understand that being such busy person, even you will one day you will die on the road without gaining any dhamma. Therefore, it is very important to understand, to calm down yourself. Relax yourself, without which you cannot live in this society longer. To live longer, happily, peacefully, just calm down yourself. Relax yourself. And be more mindful of your actions. Give attention to your breath from time to time. Calm down yourself. That is the way. We cannot mold, we cannot make other people happy. But we can make ourselves happy. That's the way to live. That is the way to live, to lead right understanding, right act, intention, right speech, right livelihood, and eventually right liberation. Thank you. Thank you, Bhante. Thank you, brothers and sisters. Let's pay three respects to Bhante to thank him for such an enlightening talk. Suki Hotu, Suki Hotu, Suki Hotu, may Triple Gem bless you. May you live long in peace. Friends, today for this Dhamma talk and this session, uh, we have We are going to dedicate merit now. As you all know, the Buddha has taught us that if, when we share merit with our departed ones, if they are ready, if they are expecting our merit, they can receive this merit. Therefore, we today we dedicate merit, especially with uh, Sister Josephine Pang, uh, one ex-staff of BF. She has uh, recently passed away. So we would like to express our deepest condolence to her family and would like to dedicate marriage to her. 
may she rest in peace and be blessed by with the triple gem always that is the wish let's share this merit with her and with all of our, our departed ones may just you can think of your parents your relatives and all our depart, dearly departed ones rejoice this merit may they receive what they need by the power of all this merit may they attain supreme bliss of nibbana with that good thoughts let me to recite this stanza those who know this stanza please recite with me idam me nyate nang ho tu sukhita hun tu idam me nyate nang ho tu sukhita hun tu nyate yo idam me nyate nang ho tu sukhita hun tu nyate yo let's share this merit with all deities and all beings please recite this stanza ताच अम्हे संबता पुण्य सब देवा अमोदू सब संपत्ति सिद्धियावताच अम्हे संबता पुण्य संपद सब भूता अमोदू सब संपत्ति सिद्धिया ताच अम्हे संबता पुण्य संपद सब सत्ता अमोदू सब संपत्ति सिद्धिया साधु साधु thank you group as a buddhist group especially when we get together even here or wherever we have to be very careful of what we are talking if we simply get together and just talk too much things gossip false speech uh malicious talk has speech Trivial talk. You know, the Buddha gave four four different precepts to curb this tongue. Mm-hmm. For all other things, only one precept: refrain from killing. It's done. Finished. Only one. Huh? Refrain from stealing. Refrain. Simply refrain it. Done. Refrain from. sexual misconduct only one precept but to refrain from false uh, refrain from this mouth tongue false speech malicious speech harsh speech uh, frivolous talk four different hmm? musawada pissuna vacha parusa vacha sampa phala four different things tapo we have to be very careful when we talk that is how we practice that is how we become good buddhist not the label buddhist good buddhist should be mindful mindful of what we are talking so our if we have right speech which leads to right action right livelihood right effort right mindfulness right concentration when we have right concentration it is called right concentration why it is with the support of first seven factors of the path right concentration can be gained only with the support of the first seven factors of the path without which that concentration that you gain is not the right concentration the buddha said it is to this this concentration right concentration that one can come to right understanding right realization that is where right understanding helps us to understand clearly realize the reality the four noble truth that is the knowledge of 
un, uh, unsatisfactoriness, the knowledge of the cause of unsatisfactoriness, the knowledge of uh, the cessation and the path leading to the cessation. That is the reality. That is how one realizes the real nature of the world. That factor is called right knowledge. Samma jnana. Which leads to the right liberation. So this is why, friends, we have to understand right understanding. If we have right understanding, the Buddha said, it is the forerunner. As the forerunner, it helps us to understand all this process, the whole teaching. Now let's understand how to develop this right understanding. Right understanding is to be developed in our daily life. It is to be developed by uh, two things, by practicing and studying. Study and practice. Practice and study. These two should go together, hand in hand. In like, like, what do you call it? Yin and Jing? Huh? Yang? Just like that. Jing Yang Yang. This should be practiced together. When you practice in daily life, husband and wife should practice this. Husband and wife should practice, understand properly, understand why they met, why they are under the same roof. For this, they should practice two things, love and respect, love and respect. Simply having love is not enough. Love should go beyond carnal love, beyond sexual love. The husband and wife should be real kalyana mitta to each other. Kalyana, it is the kalyana mitta who uh, helps us. So this is how the Buddha taught us what right understanding is. Our right understanding should lead to right intention. Right intention. Right intention is very much important in the teaching of the Buddha. People do many things thinking that it is right, that it is with right understanding. They do many things, but not with clear intention, clear understanding of what is intention. Intention simply they think that if whatever you are doing, if you have a particular intention to do something good, that is what is intention for them. Intention is not in future. All the time we have to understand intention means now. Whether your intention is good now, at this moment. For instance, you can, you can uh, think to build a religious place where the, the land, in the land, there, are, there is a big tree. You simply cut this down and make the place, build a house there for a religious purpose. Where there are, uh, your intention is good because you want to make, you want to build a religious place, but you have break some precepts, some uh, sort of regulations, some rules. If the property is not belongs to you, what happens? It belongs to the government or it belongs to somebody else. Then you have done something wrong. Though you have right intention, you have done something wrong. You have uh, 
you have broken some uh, precepts or st- like stealing hmm? or maybe you have uh, killed some um, animals there all those are to be understood when you do something now whether my intention is right now is a good intention now this for this section for this section like that like that when you do good deeds you to understand whether the intention is clear intention is good at this moment right intention means not to hold things not to not to attach to things there are people they do good deeds for instance they donate money for some reason for a cause good cause and then they want to say this this is what i did this is that i did. i gave this much money for that purpose and then they grasp it they think that once you once you gave you know right intention the first thing is nekam sankap we have to have a good intention to let things go once you do something let it go we don't want to grasp it if you simply uh, think of it and talk too much about what you what you donated or what you did that is in your mind as a as a rudiment as something uh, hindrance you always think of that and you are sometimes talking too much of it because of your attachment to that though you materially gave it not mentally you have not abandoned such things right intention then right uh, livelihood uh, right right intention one thing is abandoning let things go that is called uh, nekam sankap then the second one is avyapada sankap avyapada avyapada means non ill will this has to be practiced when we have right intention non ill will we have no ill will towards anybody anyone any being then non cruelty is to be practiced you know, when we practice in such a way it is because of our right understanding it is because of our right understanding that we come to right intention our if our intention our thoughts our concepts are clear good concept good intention we talk about something good that is right speech right speech right speech is very much significant to be practiced as a congregation as a 10 uh, there are 10 wrong views buddha has pointed out 10 views which are wrong therefore they are called miccha ditti against it is the the direct opposite of samma ditti miccha ditti this we should go beyond this ditti these 10 views for this the buddha said 10 views there are people as the buddha said there are people who do not take do not see the importance of offering giving sharing with others they always neglect it and say that nothing given no point giving why should you give others and there are people who do not like do not see the importance of offering something when you offer something to a religious person to a spiritual person there are results but there are people in society they do not see this uh, results this importance of giving offering and also there are people who do not see the importance of sacrifice if you do such things there are results 
We have to see this. We have to understand this. Not simply having a view, but we should understand this. There are people who do not see uh, this world. For those who were in the past, in the other world, they do not see this world. They see only one world. There are different worlds, different realms. As you all know, there are 31 different realms. So we have to see these things. And for those who are here, living here, they do not see the next world. They simply think that once we die, everything finished. Everything is over. That is a sort of nihilistic view. So, such people think that there is no point supporting parents, supporting mother, supporting father, father. No results. They don't see whether it's good. So such people think uh, that there are no spontaneous beings. You know, beings are born spontaneously as well. Spontaneously means without the unification of parents, parents' union, without parents' union, beings are born in the world, such as deities, hungry ghost, preta, yakha, different beings. They have no parents, but they simply manifest because of their karma. In such a case, people don't believe this. There are people, they they don't believe this. Spirits. They are called spontaneous pain. And they do not believe, they do not accept that there are some people who have developed their mind and uh, reached some different stages such as stream entry, once written and non written, this type of things. They don't believe these things. So those, all those are called wrong view. Buddha kept them all away because they were wrong view. Buddha pointed out the importance of seeing things as they are. That is why how that is how we enlarge our knowledge, enlarge our view, so that it becomes a enlarged view. The Buddha see Buddha taught us there are uh, results of giving. If you give others, if you share with others, if you practice dana, you get, can gain results. You can be happy. That is what is called punya or merit. If you offer something to a virtuous person, you can be more happy. If you do a sort of sacrifice, you can, you can be more and more happy. Believe or not, there, are, there will be, there are other, other planets, other realms in the world. You have to accept these things. And if you support your mom, if you support your dad, there are results. These are good things. That is how you see the right understanding. That is how you understand rightly, correctly, properly. Then the Buddha said, there are beings born spontaneously. There are people, there are uh, persons who have developed their mind and who have come to understand reality, things as they are. So these are called right view, how about right understanding. And when we come to uh, the third level, that is called enlightened level. When you come to enlightened level, as the Buddha said, what is right understanding is understanding is the knowledge of unsatisfactoriness. The knowledge of the cause of unsatisfactoriness, the knowledge of the cessation of unsatisfactoriness, 
and the knowledge of the path lead into the cessation of unsatisfactoriness. This lead us for the realization of this four noble truth. Not mere, not mere understanding level, but eventually the realization level of the four noble truths. So the Buddha's instruction here is to go deeper and deeper. Simply understanding these ten things as wholesome is not enough. As merit is not enough. Therefore, Buddha said, go beyond merit even. You, one day you will have to, uh, you have to shun both merit and demerit and go beyond. For that the Buddha taught the way. Right understanding, Buddha said, it is the harbinger, it is the forerunner. Forerunner, the harbinger, is the uh, is for the truth, Dhamma and the Nibbana. Just like the dawn is the harbinger of sun. Right understanding is the harbinger of truth. The four noble truths. For this purpose, Buddha delivered a special discourse named Mahachattari Sakasutta. Mahachattari Sakasutta means great 50, 40. Great 40. Where the Buddha pointed out two types of right understanding. We can simply understand things. When we come to understand, we first we have to come from wrong understanding to right understanding. Right understanding, with that right understanding, we are doing something good. Though we are doing something good, it does not lead to the cessation of dukkha, for which we have to uh, then abandon that sort of right thing, what you call good that right things, we do right things, good things, as meritorious deeds, such as offering dana, doing many different good deeds. But all these are blended with uh, taints. Therefore, Buddha said, sasava, with sasava, with taints, with defilements, there are defilements. There are greed, hatred, and delusion. We organize a big ceremony, which is, which is good. It is a religious ceremony, which is good. But when you do this type of thing, there is hate. There is greed. There is something, expecting something, such as gain, maybe gain and fame, such things. Though it is good, it is not kusala. It is not, not leading to kusala. Therefore the Buddha said, this, all these are called sasava, with pains. Punya bhagya, heading to punya, heading to right, heading to merit. It's a good thing though, there are pains. Punya bhagya, upadi vepakka which gives results in future. Therefore, that is good. That is right understanding. That's one way to see. And the Buddha's teaching, real teaching is going even beyond that what you call right understanding. That level is called anasava, no taints. Anasava, lokuttara, Going beyond the world. Loka Uttara. Loka is the world. Go beyond the world. Go Loka Uttara. Magganga. It is the factor of the path which leads to the path, to the cessation, to the deliverance. Nibbana. This is how once a certain monk went to the Buddha and asked about right understanding. 
Then the Buddha said, it is the knowledge of suffering or unsatisfactoriness, knowledge of the cause of unsatisfactoriness, the knowledge of the cessation of unsatisfactoriness and the knowledge of the path leading to the cessation of unsatisfactoriness. Friends, I am so glad to be here with you this year too, to share the Dhamma with you and to practice the Dhamma, practice with you. As <clears throat> we met last year, we learned the Dhamma and practiced the Dhamma. From today, I will be with you until the 11th, so we can meet from time to time. We can learn the Dhamma and practice the Dhamma. Today is the Sunday service. Now it is the time for all of uh, us to understand the Dhamma. You all are ready to listen to a Dhamma talk. For this Dhamma talk, our topic is right view or right understanding and how it is to be developed. What is right view or right understanding? The Pali term for this is Samma Ditti. Ditti literally means uh, view, though the teaching of the Buddha is going beyond it, beyond this simply the view. You know, there are two translations, view and understanding for the term, Pali term, samadhiti. View is, uh, we all have our own views. View is quite, I see, as I see, it is quite narrow. You, in the time of the Buddha, there were 62 views, ditti, or isams. Buddha understood that all those were sort of confined, those were confined to a certain limitation. The Buddha wanted to see beyond these views. Therefore, Buddha found a way to understand reality as it is. Reality cannot be reached through views, but through understanding. Realization. Reality is to be realized by the wise. That is how the Buddha saw this. In order to understand this, when we think of right understanding, now from this time I would like to use the term right understanding because I prefer to use that term, rather right view. This is right understanding. In order to understand right view or right understanding, there are, as I see, there are three levels of understanding, right understanding. I put this as three E's. Three E's, E, starting E, the three terms, ethical level, enlarged level, and enlightened level. Three E's. Ethical level of understanding. That is simply to understand ethics. In every religion, in every society, we should know what is good and bad, what is right and wrong, what is wholesome and unwholesome. That is simple. If we are right-thinking people, we can understand what is right. What is right is, again, depend on different situations. So, however, we can simply understand right and wrong, good and bad, wholesome and unwholesome. That is what is called ethical level. 
the second level is bit enlarge we buddhist want to enlarge our knowledge we want to see uh, we, if we use the word uh, view it is a panoramic view we want to enlarge our view enlarge the uh, and see it deeper we want to go deeper level that is true uh, 